strength. At 157 pounds, it's Terrell Barraclaw, number 20 in the country for Penn State. And Doug Zapp ranked 15th for Penn. Another interesting matchup here. Barraclaw not ranked, but has some solid wins under his belt already in his career. Zaff up a couple of weight classes from the last time we saw him, 141 pounds the last time he competed. Um, Zaff with a couple of great wins already on the season. Zaff getting the single leg, trying to pull it in. Barraclaw doing a good job with that hip pressure and not letting Zaff get deeper in on his on his penetration on that shot. We're back up on our feet. Zap is a Philadelphia area wrestler, wrestled for Downingtown West High School, where Penn State, and they recruit nationally, they get them from everywhere. This Terrell Barrowclaw from Kaysville, Utah. Don't he, see many Utah and Pennsylvania matchups these days. Academic All Big Ten, uh, this is when I was talking about academics, Terrell Barrowclaw. He's only a biomedical engineering major. I'm sure that's pretty easy, right? Yeah, I can't imagine he spends too much time in the classroom yeah. or in the books on that one. That's for sure. So these two wrestlers going at it, trying to feel each other out in the first period. Though Barraclough with a two to nothing advantage early on. Doug Zaff was recruited as a 125 pounder for Penn. Wrestled in the lower weights in high school, including his senior year of high school. Obviously, has grown quite a bit since his freshman year here at Penn. He was 45 and two his senior year. He was the state champ in 2017 at 106 pounds. So he's put on about 50 pounds of hopefully muscle. Certainly looks like muscle from here. Yeah, I would say it looks like muscle at this point, and uh, he's one of those I guess you would consider a late bloomer for so so you short people out there like me. There may still be a chance. You can hold out hope. Entering the final minute of the first period, I, I said earlier that it was a two to nothing Penn State advantage. It was a mistake on the scoreboard. I pulled a Ron Burgundy and just read the score and didn't look into it myself. So here we are again. These two are trying to figure out what might work best against the other. Pivotal match or pivotal bout in this match is Penn with a seven to six advantage in the overall scoring of the match winner of this match will put their squad into the lead going into the halftime. Zaff has been a little bit more aggressive in this first period, but there really hasn't been a ton of uh, real action and, and solid leg attacks by either guy so far in this first period. Eric Law doing a good job of just hand fighting and keeping Zaff from being able to really open up his leg attacks. Barraclaw hasn't wrestled a lot for Penn State, but he was 18 and three during his redshirt season back in 2019. So he's obviously got the ability. We have a whistle. Got a little bit of blood here for Doug Zapp, a little bit of a bloody nose. And we'll work on that and get him cleaned up. You heard the Penn coaches there calling for a hands to the face call, or at least a warning for hands to the face. And Maybe that's a little bit of the byproduct of that hands to the face uh, that we were seeing in that match. But Zap quickly plugs that nose back up and we're back out on the map. Coach Sanderson giving some instructions to his wrestler while they had a little bit of a break. Cale Sanderson, one of the most legendary wrestlers in the history of collegiate wrestling, 159 and 0. Doesn't get much better than that for his alma mater, Iowa State, where he was the head coach for three seasons before coming to Penn State and completely turning that program around. There's a one point for Penn. A stall warning, I believe, right? I think it was just an escape in that one. Looks like we have a break and a check on the riding time. And it looks like we're all set here again. And Sanderson yeah. also wanted to know what's the point for rep but he's gonna let it go so is that for the escape up one zero here in the second period oh yeah I said escape yeah. <laughs> yes that's what I meant Doug Zaff on the offense here you hear the pen coach is calling for stalling on Barraclough already here in the second period sometimes I get so focused on the match that I forget where we are <laughs> Uh, there's a warning uh, 
grip that like a little lock in the back of the head, right? Yeah, probably a little bit of a warning about those hands in and around the face and head area. Uh, Got to think this Penn wrestler might be getting, or Penn State wrestler might be getting warned for stalling here. Oh, Zaplin on the deep high crotch, changes it to a single leg up to his feet. Nothing yet. Takedown there for Doug Zapp. And Excellent work by Doug Zapp to get the takedown. Just under a minute left in the second period, and Zapp is now sprinted out to a three to nothing advantage. Doug Zaff doing a good job. Again, what we talked about earlier, some of that chain wrestling. Barraclaw took that first shot. Zaff with a re-attack, got in on a shot. Wasn't quite the shot that he wanted. Changed it over to a single leg. And finished behind to get his takedown. Now he's up three to zero with 35 seconds to go here in the second period. Excellent work by Doug Zaff. And coaches are checking with the table to make sure riding time is correct. Right now it's 11 seconds to the pen side. Here's the escape for Terrell Baraclaw. Pen, coach. pen, pen coaches are upset about him doing something. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what they're upset about there. It must have been something that uh, Baraclaw was doing on bottom on his way up to his feet. I, I missed it candidly, so I'm not sure what that what that was about. But Baraclaw with the escape. Now three to one score in favor of Doug Zaff of Penn. Zaff working with the upper body. Yeah, Zaff really digging those underhooks up on his feet. And associate head coach Brian Pierce all over to the table to ask a question of the official. That ends the second period, and Doug Zaff holding a 3-1 to advantage. And 57 seconds of riding time, so he is in range of getting over that minute mark if he can get the advantage over Terrell Baraclaw. Baraclaw chooses down to start the third period here, so knowing that that's where the riding time is at puts Baraclaw in a little bit of a sticky position. He's got to get out quickly on bottom. Uh, during that quick break there, the pen coach has got a bench warning. Oh. And we may have been incorrect on that riding time. Looks like it's only at 23 seconds ah, okay. in advantage for Zap or Penn. I'm not sure if uh, Sanderson and Baraclaw were looking at the incorrect writing type. Yeah. Well, now, it appeared that Baraclaw walked right off the edge of the circle there, but no warning given. No warning for Baraclaw. 32 seconds of riding time advantage for Doug Zaff of Penn. We'll have to keep an eye to see if uh, the thing that Penn coaches were asking about happens again here, but I don't see anything at the moment. Baraclaw back up to his feet. Trying to get that mat returned is Doug Zapp and trying to pick him up and bring him back down and does. Zapp working hard on those mat returns. And while he's not quite getting him down on the first try, he's doing a job of staying committed to it, getting him back down to his feet. And here he has to do a good job of keeping his foot in the circle to keep that riding time going. But once again, Baraclaw manages to wedge his way out of the circle to get back to the middle. But now, according to the scoreboard, we are at one minute of riding time, so if Zap can maintain some riding time and build up a little more advantage, even if he allows the escape, he would have that extra point that would certainly help him. And, and Zap doing a good job of just working hard here on top to build that riding time advantage. Doing a great job of committing himself to these mat returns. Darklaw again calling out of bounds there a little bit. But I guess we'll, we can say Zap kind of mat returned him right on the edge, so we'll go back to the center for a restart. 107 to go in the third period. 110 riding time in favor Coach, of Doug Coach Rain is keeping an eye on that and saying, come on, ref. You know, he's got to stay in the circle. He's got to keep wrestling. Right now, he doesn't appear to do, be doing much of anything, does Baraclaw for Penn State. Yeah, Baraclaw and, really needs to get himself going if he wants to. Uh, so now I see what the Penn coaches are upset about. They're claiming that when Zaff is behind Baraclaw and Baraclaw is up on his feet, Zaff has his hands locked to do a mat return. And that Baraclaw is intentionally dropping his knee down to the mat, which would, in fact, be a technical violation against Baraclaw. But it looks like Zaff doing a good job of unlocking his hands, so can't even make it a question for the official as we go out of bounds again and back to the center with 40 seconds to go. So now he's pretty much locked the riding time. We need a couple of seconds of riding time, and then it's a done deal. Uh, at this point, uh, yeah, it is a, a done deal. I'm going to call that the riding time point is going to be in Doug Zapp's favor as we get to the end of this match. 
So Bearclaw has to find a way to get up, get out, and get a takedown. Otherwise, he's not going to win this match or even get back in it. He's trying there for the reversal, but wasn't able to. And the official still claiming that Zaff has control here because he's around that waist as it slides. There it is. There's the escape for Bearclaw. 12 seconds to go here in the third period. Zaff with a 3-2 lead, but the lighting time is rocked. Riding time is locked up. So Zap like. just goes into defensive mode. He has that extra point and doesn't need to give up a takedown, and he doesn't. So Doug Zap with the extra point of riding time is going to take a 5-2 to two win over Terrell Baraclaw and give the Penn Quakers at halftime a 10-6 to six advantage. So quite the upset in the making against the number two team in the country. A lot of wrestling to go here, but if you're a Penn State fan and you're sitting in the, in the crowd here in the palestra, you got to be a little bit nervous right now. I'm sure there's a few fans uh, that are sitting at home or somewhere streaming ESPN Plus and thinking, oh, we're going to watch our guys. We're going to have a nice uh, Friday night easy win, and uh, it's not going to be so easy. We still have some terrific wrestlers to go.